folks. This is the second in a series of talks on finite element analysis. The first one, the last one, was well, I talked a little bit about the big picture, kind of what finite elements was all about, kind of why we were doing it, what the big idea was, that sort of thing. I'd like to move a little bit farther now. We're going to do this in kind of baby steps. Each video is going to be short and just describe one or two basic concepts so you can listen to the ones you want and skip the ones you don't want. Um, right now I want to show you a very simple example where we're going to use a matrix method to solve a structural analysis problem. Okay? Finite elements is so powerful in part because it uses matrix algebra. What you wind up doing is you write up a very simple looking matrix equation and the different elements that make up your model add terms to your matrix. They fill up the little boxes in the matrix. But when it finally comes time to solve the problem, it's very simple. It's just inverting a matrix, which is a very routine, very straightforward process on a computer. Okay, so that's where a lot of the power comes from. So what I'm going to do is ease you in here and show you how you might solve a fairly familiar structural problem using a matrix approach. Okay, So I'm going to start, rather than doing uh, uh, strength of materials, I'm actually going to start with a statics problem, something you've almost certainly seen before. And let's do this. Let's take uh, the simplest truss imaginable. It's two bars, okay? It's pinned there and it's pinned there. And let's say that's 45 degrees. I'm not sure that's that's close enough to 45 degrees. It doesn't really matter, but there's one meter right there, okay? And we're going to call this element A and that element B, okay? Two bars, nothing. This is easy to solve by hand, and uh, I'm going to solve it sort of by hand, but I'm going to show you how to do it in terms of a matrix because. Um, that's how finite elements work, and it's going to be, I hope, an easy transition from the way I solved this one to thinking about how uh, finite elements work with uh, elements that have finite stiffness. Remember, this has infinite stiffness. It's statics. So we assume there's no deformation. That's the equivalent of the elastic modulus being like infinity. All right? There's, so the, the whole idea of statics, the reason mathematics and statics is so simple is we don't worry about displacements. Okay? We worry about stresses, but we don't worry about displacements. Okay, so let's, let's put a force on this, and let's put it off axis just to make it interesting. Okay, there's 20,000 newtons, and let's say that's 30 degrees. Okay? So, easy problem. What I'm going to do, there's, there's a couple ways to do this, but I'm going to take that uh, point right there, I'm going to draw a free body diagram of that point, and then I'm going to write out the two equations of equilibrium. Now, in order to do this, I've got to have a sign convention. This is the one I almost always use. I always use that one unless I've got a pretty good reason not to, and there's no real good reason here. So that's the one we'll use. So let's draw the free body diagram. All right? And I'm going to draw it at just that point there. Well, okay. I'm going to assume that this is in compression, and this is in tension. Now, if I'm wrong, the forces will come out uh, with negative signs in front of it. If I'm right, the forces in A and B will come out positive. Okay? So I'm given this load. What I'm trying to do, just so we keep, we keep this in mind, find FA and FB. I'm trying to find the forces in those two elements. That's the goal of the problem here. So anyway, back to this. Now that's going to be in tension, so it's going to be pulling that way. So there's FA. And B, I'm going to have to write in terms of two components, the X and the Y components. Well, it's in compression, so I'll call that FBX, and I'll call that FBY. Right? So there's the reaction forces in these, in these two elements here. Now, I've got two components of force here. Well, let's, let's call this one, that's going to be force in the Y direction. And I've also got a component in the X direction, so I'll put that here. Well, oh, sorry, FX. Okay, so those are, I've got are all my forces in the elements here, all the reaction forces and the external force there. So let's see. Well, FBX equals FBY, and since that's, a, that's 45 degrees, if you do the trig, you'll find out this is the square root of 2 over 2 FB, and that's 0 0.7071 FB. So I'm going to use that number in here, okay? Well, let's see. F x, that's going to be 20,000 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And f y is going to be 20,000 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees. 
right? So there we go. These are the, these are the things we're eventually going to write into our uh, equations of equilibrium. Well, sine of 30 is a half, and that's awfully convenient. So that makes that 10,000 newtons. And that's 0.866 something right there. So that's going to work out to be, let's see, 1,700, I'm sorry, 17,320 newtons. So there we go. We know everything we need to know now to start writing out some very simple equations here. Uh, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to erase this right here. Well, how do you solve a statics problem? You write out the free body diagram, and then you write out the equations of equilibrium. There's the free body diagram. Let's do the equations of equilibrium. The first one, sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero. Okay, that should be pretty easy. Let's see, minus fa, because it's going in the negative x direction. Remember, that's x and y. Okay, plus fbx. Well, we already know that's 0.7071 fb plus fx, which is 10,000. And that all has to equal zero. That's good. I'm going to rearrange this just a little bit. What I'm going to do is there's an equal sign there. I'm going to put the things I don't know on the left and the things I do know on the right. Now, I'll tell you why here in a second. It'll become clear. Um, just bear with me, though. This will be okay. So let's see. Um, I have, if I write that out this way, I can write FA minus 0 0.7071 FB equals 10,000 newtons. Okay? Exact same as that, just rearranged a little bit. So that's all right. Next one, oh, I screwed this up. There we go. Sum of the forces in the y direction has to be zero. All right, that's the other equation of equilibrium. So we're, we're doing this just the way we solve every other statics problem. All right, so let's see, FBY. Well, that's 0 0.7071 FB minus that minus 17,320 newtons. It has to equal zero. All right? That's easy. Um, I'm going to rearrange this in the same way I did this one. I'm going to put all the things I don't know on the left side of the equal sign and all the things I do know on the right hand side of the equal sign. So I'm going to, this is particularly easy. And that's 17,320 newtons again. All right? So there's one equation right there. Get out of your way here. There's the other one. Two equations, one, two. Two unknowns, FA, FB. Well, as long as these two equations aren't the same, and they're not, or they aren't multiples of each other, and they're not, so as long as these are two separate equations, if I've got two equations and two unknowns, I'm in business. I can solve this problem. Now, the way you'd normally do it, it's really the way I would do it, well, there's one equation and one unknown there. I just divide through by 0.7071 and I'd know what FB was, and then I'd back substitute in there and find FA. That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You'll get the right answer. Another way to do it, though, it turns out a more general way, a more, uh, I want to get rid of that, too, just to keep things simple, um, a more uh, flexible way to do it is write things out in terms of a matrix, okay? Now, matrix algebra, matrix math is an entire field of study. People do, are, I'm sure, still doing research on it. There's a class you can take in matrix algebra, and there's a lot of depth to it. For the time being, we're just going to consider matrix uh, notation just a, a form of notation. It's more than that, but for right now, it just needs to be that. We can worry about the rest of it later. For now, just think of matrices as a, as a simplified way of writing out sets of equations. Okay, that's a good way to start. Well, if I write these out, I want, what I want to do is I want to write something out that looks like this. I want a matrix called A, and the matrix is just a block of numbers, and I want a vector, which is just a list of things, and I want the, 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 the vector to include the things I don't know. That'll eventually be FA and FB. And I'm going to write this as B over here, and that's a list of the numbers I do know, so that's going to be that one and that one. All right? If these were just scalars, if that was just a number, a number, a number, a variable, and a number, the way I'd do this is I'd say a times f equals b. Solve for f. Well, I'd say f equals b over a. Well, in matrix notation, you don't actually write b over a. You write it slightly differently. All right? You write it this way. 
okay? a to the minus 1 times b. And there's some reasons for it, but they aren't important right here. The point is, if these were numbers, that's what you'd do. It would be easy, right? It turns out that if they're matrices, you do it the same way. That's one of the beauties of matrix algebra. You can take this and write it out in a simpler form. And the best part is it looks like this no matter how many equations you've got. If I had a million equations and a million unknowns, I'd still write it out exactly like this, and I'd still solve it exactly the same way. You're starting to see how this, this way of writing things out is very flexible. It's very general. You don't care what size the problem is anymore. Well, that's big. That's really important. So what I'm going to eventually do is I'm going to write, want to write this down. Okay. My computer knows how to do that, and so do your uh, graphing calculators. If you have a TI 80 something or 90 something, or one of those those cool Nspires or the Casio or whatever, any kind of graphing calculator will know what to do with this. You just type in the, that and that, and tell it to find that, and it will. All right. So that's all you got to know for right now. All you got to know now is how do I write down A and how do I write down B? Well, what lives in A is the coefficients in front of the variables. Well, that's a 1. We don't write the 1, but it's there. So I'll write 1, okay, minus 0.7071. Now, there's no FA in there. Well, so that's implied that that's a 0. And there's that other 7071. Okay, so that's A. B or F, I don't know what that is. That's FA and that's FB. B, well, I know what B is. That's just the numbers on the right side. So I'm going to write those down. And that's 10,000 newtons, and that's 17,320 newtons. I'm actually working to, what is it, four significant figures. It's actually, I think, 17,321 or something like that. But this is enough. If I solve this using my calculator, computer, whatever, what I wind up with is I wind up with this. F is actually going to have two numbers in it now because it's got two variables right there. It's going to be two numbers. And I'm going to get, let's see, 27320 and 24490. Okay? That's the solution vector. All right? And the way you, you interpret that is, say, that FA is the top one. So FA equals uh, 27320 newtons, and FB equals 24490 newtons. Okay? Now, that was a little involved for a two-variable problem. But what if it was a 20-variable problem? Now, all of a sudden, this is starting to look pretty attractive. You want to do a 20 variable problem by back substitution? I don't know about you, I don't. I want time to sleep tonight, and if I try to do a 20 variable problem by back substitution, I'm going to be working on it all night. This is easy. I just type this into Excel or my calculator, computer, whatever, and it takes care of it for me. Okay, so what we've done is we started out with a very simple problem and solved it using matrix algebra. Now I've got I'm 13 some minutes into this. I'll make this quick. I'm going to make one change to that little statics problem we just had. All right. Start with the same structure we had before. That was 45, and I have my 20,000 newtons there at a 30 degree angle. I'm going to make one change to the structure so that you can't solve it with statics anymore. I'm going to do that. Okay, so that's A, B, C. Now it's statically indeterminate. There's an FA, an FB, and an FC. All right, so there's three things I need to know, but I can still only write two equations of equilibrium. That makes it statically indeterminate. I can't solve it with just statics anymore. Now I have to use strength of materials. I have to use something I know about the deformation. Well, let's guess that the, the deformed shape is over there, so this the deformed shape of the elements will look something like that. I don't know where it is, but that looks plausible at least. Right? So I have to know what delta x and delta y are, and I have to start writing out equations that relate forces in these elements to delta f and delta y. All right. Well, I can do it. 
that starts to get kind of cumbersome. And all I'd have to do is add a little more to this structure, and it gets just completely uh, untenable. It's just too much work. That's where finite elements come in. If I have a finite element representation of those little bars, and I know what the angles are, I can just start adding them in in a very simple, very procedural way. And I can make this structure as complicated as I want. If I have a truss, it looks like, I don't know, I'll make something up here. Okay, let's put another one down there, and another one here, and maybe let's put something there, and let's have a force, oh, we'll put another one there, and have a force that way. That would be an absolute nightmare to do by hand. In finite elements, this is easy. This is, I mean, you don't even break a sweat doing this, okay? That's the power of finite elements. It's the idea of being able to model each one of those, ele those, those components as an element that's written out in matrix form, being able to combine the elements into a large matrix equation and then very simply solve that matrix equation using very, very standardized routine procedures and get a very useful answer, okay? That's where we're headed in the next video, okay?